I'm excited to round out the presentations today with a little bit of review and a little bit of what's new, also in the realm of collaboration, but building on top of the themes we've already established around control and quality, and that is starting with DBT Mesh. If you didn't catch it a few months ago, DBT Mesh is a whole bunch of things. It's a pattern for collaboration at scale in DBT projects, multiple, large, small, everywhere. Uh, and the Mesh pattern is now generally available. So thousands of DBT projects have already adopted model governance capabilities around access contracts, versions, dependencies. That's all old news. It's been out for several, several months now, and we have many, many people using them. We've also rolled out things like job completion triggers across projects, things like staging environments to enable data isolation, column level lineage across projects, and a bunch more things that are still to come in the coming months. I'm excited to show you some of this in a demo in just a few moments. But taking a step back and re remembering and reviewing, what is DBT Mesh really? Well, it's enabling domain level ownership of data without compromising governance or creating silos. The interfaces between these projects that you're seeing on the right are well-defined, well-contracted, and they're the points of handoff between, in this case, the platform team, the finance team, and the marketing team. We've come along and sliced up the monolithic project you see on the left, but the references across models are still just ref. It's still just DBT. And going back to where we began today's presentation with my colleague Grace's uh, journey into the Wonka multiverse. I'd like to adopt for you all the guise of a member of the finance team at our chocolate factory. Again, we've sliced this up so that now Gene on the platform team has laid the foundations. He's really made it possible for all the Wonkas who are going to come after. Grace has done better marketing for DBT than I think anyone has in a long time. And me, well, I guess I'll just have to be your Timo say, on finance. Let's go on a journey together, shall we? And please ignore the word Jaffle in the video you're about to watch. Uh, Rebranding takes time. So here we are on the finance team of our chocolate factory. Um, we have some dependencies on the platform team upstream, as well as some folks who are using us downstream. That's Grace in the marketing team. I can jump in here and see the full lineage of my project, including these models like orders and order items, which are public. These are data products that are mature and reliable and other folks can take dependencies on them. And I know that they're mature and reliable because they have contracts enforced. That means the set of columns in this model is guaranteed to be a stable set of names and data types, as well as tests or constraints enforced by the data warehouse. Jumping into the cloud IDE here, uh, you'll quickly see that we've got this product model where I've already been making some changes around profit margin, adding that in so my colleague Grace can take uh, make take uh, advantage of it. And I'm compiling this cross-project reference, which just works, and it compiles to the staging environment of that upstream platform project. What does that mean? It means that if there's sensitive data in the production environment of the platform data, maybe about our secret ingredients, uh, we don't want every developer to see that sensitive data when they're doing development. So we can resolve references both in this project and to other projects to the staging deployment of those projects instead. Pretty neat. So now that I've got my staging references working well and I can build my orders model without needing to build anything upstream, both those cross-project references as well as the things that I am using deferral to avoid building unbuilt upstream dependencies. I can preview this model and it looks pretty good. I've decided that I don't really care about the food order column. I prefer the words yes and no to true, false, or one, zero, and I've added in profit margin. And yet when I go to build this model, what happens? It seems to fail because ah, I had a contract. I had a promise to Grace and to her team about what was going to be in this orders model. And this isn't some other tool or some data contract living in a, a text file or a proto schema somewhere else in some other chocolate factory in the world. This is in DBT. It's all the same tool. It's all the same workflow, quality and control throughout, collaboration throughout. So what I'm going to need to do here is un yes, no, my Boolean column, bring back is food order since it seems like the marketing folks may have been depending on it, and then add in profit margin as a column in my YAML definition as well, my contract with a 
data type as well as a description because it's a good idea. And if I really wanted to, I could actually make a new version of this orders model. I say, there actually is a breaking change. We no longer want is food item. We need to change the data type of is drink item. Um, I could, in this case, I can make the change in a non-breaking way. So that's what I'm going to do instead. But just know this is an API. It can be contracted. It can also be versioned. And we can put Grace and team through a deprecation window to make sure that it doesn't break on them overnight. So I'm building into a good place now. And once I've done that and deployed this model into that staging environment, I'll actually be able to check it out in the staging view of DBT Explorer. I haven't deployed it just yet, but as soon as I do, you'll see those changes showing up in that staging tab. Now, one more piece here, in addition to the staging environment that you already see, is the way that we can link together jobs within and across DBT projects, thanks to job completion triggers. In this case, the job that we're looking at here was triggered to complete, or triggered to run rather, on the completion of that mesh platform staging deploy. We can do the same for production, and Grace and the marketing folks can do the same for us. In this way, we can have a deployment pattern that looks and feels a whole lot like the mesh we see in front of us today. It's a pattern for collaboration across development, deployment, all the way through. That's DBT Mesh in our uh, multiverse of chocolate factories. Thanks for bearing with me. A couple of things that are new that you may have caught in that video, job completion triggers across projects, staging environments for data isolation, as well as some things that are coming next, things like environment level permissions and warehouse connections to make it possible to keep projects unified and, and have a scalable approach to multi-project workflows, easier private package setup, so that you can share reusable code, macros, utilities, in addition to how you can already share data sets and data products via public models. And we're always baking more. We're talking to Mesh customers now about more flexible access levels, bi-directional project dependencies, smarter orchestration of pro projects, et cetera, et cetera. If you want to be part of the fun, I'm very happy to have you. Well, that's uh, the demo I had for you, but the slide is telling me that I've got one more demo still to show. And, you know, it's interesting. We're talking about patterns for collaboration across all of the people who are doing data work and using DBT at an organization. But the question remains, what about those folks who are doing data work not in DBT? Well, a couple of years ago, there was the matter of people who want to write Python instead of SQL. We added Python models, lo and behold. Okay. Um, there's been people who want to do work in VS Code instead of in the DBT Cloud IDE, lo and behold, the VS Code extension and, and the Cloud CLI. What about people who know how to do some business logic definition, maybe even some lightweight data transformation, but don't really know how to sit down and stare at the blank page and write some SQL? A few months ago, we started talking to data teams around the globe, and we heard a consistent theme. DBT was helping them improve the quality, the reliability, the speed with which they could build transformation logic. And yet, for some analysts, jumping directly into a DBT model was still unfamiliar and challenging. Teams might have had low code transformation solutions to help, but these are really difficult to govern, to test, to version control. The code within them was unreliable. This lack of centralization creates risk and reliable metrics. And yet the work doesn't stop. Members of the business who need to be defining key business logic, folks like me right now, they still need a place to go and help them write some SQL. So this is where the DBT visual editor changes all of that. All of the transformations you're about to see in this demo, thanks, Greg, these are all going to compile down to SQL. They're going to be version controlled within a DBT project. With DBT Mesh, you can control access to specific models, you can create a sandbox for teams to work in so that they're not creating all of these models right within the hub. The visual editor works whether you're creating a new model or editing an existing one, and it has an interface that's familiar to anyone coming from an existing low-code transformation tool. Let's take a look. First things first, the canvas in front of us. This is a single dbt model. I'm going to modify it by dragging and dropping a few different other dbt models into it. These are my starting points, my building blocks. In this case, stage GitHub users, 
And I actually want to join in stage GitHub user emails. You see a little while back, we changed the name of our company. We used to be Fishtown Analytics. Now we're DBT Labs. We've grown up a bit. Um, and I'm curious to see how many of the commits in our public GitHub repositories are still associated with Fishtown Analytics email addresses rather than new DBT Labs email addresses. So I've joined these two tables together on the common column, user ID. Maybe you caught that to join operator. And then what I'm going to do now is add in a formula to take from the email address the domain of that email. Uh, now, maybe I, again, focused on the business, don't know offhand the SQL or even the Snowflake-specific SQL uh, that's going to enable me to do that, or Databricks-specific or BigQuery-specific. So I'm just going to ask for a little bit of help. See, similar to the AI assistance you saw earlier in today's presentation, it's AI assistance for SQL. In this case, splitting apart the email address into its domain so that I can really quickly filter on that domain with another filter operator. And then in a moment, we'll be able to preview the results as well as at any point along the way, view the compiled SQL that's actually being created. So far, all I've done is visually represent the transformation I want to happen, as well as asking in plain English for the business logic that I want to apply in order to turn email addresses into domains. Now, all I need to do is filter down to Fishtown Analytics and dbtlabs.com. If I want to change this filter later on or remove it entirely, I have the right to do it. And I can see at any point along the way, the exact previewed code in terms of compiled SQL, as well as the output of this transformation. Finally, let's do a really simple aggregation. Nothing too fancy here. This is no replacement for really writing SQL, especially when it comes to things like window functions, trailing seven-day aggregates, et cetera, et cetera. But just to be able to group up by email domain and then count by the number of contributors, well, there we have it. A couple hundred folks in dbtlabs.com and just under 100 who still are affiliated with that old fishtownanalytics.com. I know I might be guilty. Now, the visual editor isn't just for creating new models. Uh, let's actually look at an existing model that we already have in our project in DBT Cloud. In this case, a model about Pendo visitors. Pendo is the tool that we use for NPS, a net promoter score tracking in DBT Cloud. There's plenty going on here. Uh, but again, maybe I'm looking in Explorer and I, I don't immediately have the facility to understand what that code means. Well, there we have it, a visual representation of an existing DBT model in a way that makes it a little bit easier for me to understand, as well as click in at any point along the way and see the previewed output. That much easier to debug, that much easier to split into components, that much easier to see the compiled SQL generated bit by composable bit. If this sounds awesome to you, as I hope it does to many of you. We'd love to hear your input or your feedback, your thoughts, your concerns. Reach out to us, and we'll see if your use case is a good fit for the visual editor for dbt, remembering that this is a low-code interface to the same dbt you know and love. It's all code. It's all inversion control. It's all testable, documentable, meshable at the end of the day. That's low-code development in dbt Cloud. Make sure that everyone on your team can contribute safely in a way that's tracked, that's visible, where nothing gets lost, but the people who are closest to the context of the business can actually provide that context, ultimately in the form of code. Now, everything I've shown you so far and everything my colleagues showed you earlier is possible because of the platform that we are building in DBT Cloud. I want to spend a few minutes at the end here talking about that platform because it's what makes it all possible. And one of the main goals of DBT Cloud is to abstract away the maintenance burden required to run DBT by providing a fully managed SaaS solution on top of it. So similar to other SaaS tools you use, Salesforce, Databricks, Snowflake, whatever they may be, you don't have to think hard about the version of the runtime underlying the capabilities of that platform. But we want DBT Cloud to feel the same way. 
where dbt version upgrades historically have taken time have required overhead and a lot of coordination among a bunch of different teams recently we introduced the option to automatically keep your dbt cloud environments and jobs on the latest version of dbt when you select this version you'll be off that version treadmill for a good long while you don't need to think about upgrades let us handle the maintenance the testing the piping and plumbing work for you so that you can stay focused on what matters building testing sharing valuable data products to your organization we want everyone everywhere to be running on the latest and greatest and we want to also be able to provide the same great dbt cloud experience to all of our customers across all instances of dbt cloud so to that end we're also rolling out our cell-based architecture over the course of this year. This has already been deployed worldwide, featuring multiple redundant, fully equipped cells in different regions. It means that new features and fixes will be rolled out to all customers at the same time. There isn't any distinction now between words like single-tenant, multi-tenant, different cloud providers, and it's characteristic of a mature enterprise software across the industry. We expect it to lead to a lot of benefits as we roll it out to more customers over the course of this year. Stay tuned. It's SaaS, it's multi-cell, it's more mature and stable than ever before. Oh, and did you hear me say different cloud providers? Because we're building that same great DBT cloud experience on different clouds, including Azure, a deployment coming very soon, beta later this summer. You heard about DBT cloud support for Synapse and Fabric, we're working closely with Microsoft, we're taking seriously this expansion opportunity for all of our folks who are all in on the Azure ecosystem. That's all I've got for you. We talked about control and quality for our super users like Grace at the beginning, as well as the way that we can connect and expand that data availability to more people through end-to-end -end orchestration, through the semantic layer, through DBT Explorer, and finally, patterns for collaboration around DBT Mesh and a coming soon low-code development experience that allow you to invite more folks in to the powerful DBT workflow bring them into the fold.